Hi, I'm Phyllis from southernfrugal.com. We're getting ready to make an apple pie. Now, I am using Honeycrisp apples. The way you know the Honeycrisp, they've sort of got a green background and a little bit of a stripe, and they're more of a squatty apple is what I call them. And uh, in fact, it reminds me of the Rome apple that we used to have years ago. You can still find them sometimes, but not often. But anyway, the uh, honey crisp is uh, just really considered a good eating apple, but I also think they make great apple pies, really great apple pies. Now, my favorite apple for cooking is the gala, but I also super like these honey crisp. So anyway, let's get started on the crust. Now, this is the type of pie, plan, pie pan you need it's a Pyrex glass pan when you're making any type of fruit pie and the reason is so the bottom crust will not be soggy. If you use this pan the crust is, the crust is going to be a little soggy so you definitely want to use this. Now I use this pan for making the uh, pre-baked pie crust for cream pies. This is what you would use. Okay so now you also want it to have this little edge. That's why it's, why it's like that for fruit pies, so they won't run over in the oven. And this is nine inches. Okay, so we're ready to get started now. First thing you'll need is two and two-thirds cups of all-purpose flour. Let me put that down so you can see it a little better. Two and two-thirds cups, and you don't have to sift that before measure and you want to just take a spoon in the flour bag and kind of fluff up the flour a little bit and then measure it. So two and two-thirds cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of salt, and you're going to need one whole egg and about one half cup of ice water. And we'll get to that in just a minute. And one full cup of shortening. Now I use Crisco. I'm going to use my hands for this. So the first thing you want to do is get your Crisco incorporated into the flour. Now if you wet your cup before you put the Crisco in, it'll come out a lot, lot easier. All right, so I'm just going to use my hands and work this Crisco into the flour. And I use my hands because, frankly, I think it's a lot faster. Now, the uh, egg is what holds this crust together, and it, uh, it just makes a really uh, great crust. And this is all-purpose flour. You don't want to use self-rising flour for this. Also, if you will notice, I've got plastic already on my little cooktop here, and I use my cooktop because it's the flattest surface that I have, my table is made from eastern red cedar and it's not all that uh, conducive to rolling out a pie crust. All right, so you want to get that Crisco or shortening mixed in till it's sort of like the little crumb stage, about like a small pea. All right, so we're done with that part of it. All right, one whole egg. And I'm going to put about a half of the uh, ice water in there, or about one-fourth of a cup. And then beat that really thoroughly with a fork, just to get that egg incorporated into the water. Alright, that ought to be good enough. I'm just going to put that right down in the middle. Now I'm reserving one-fourth of a cup because I want to see how much I need. Now I might need that and a little more or I might not need as much and that all depends on the flour because all you want it to do is come together. And see, that's coming together with just a fourth of a cup of the water. There we go. All right, now that was a large egg too, by the way. 
Now what we're going to do is add more flour in and get that into two somewhat equal portions. I'm just going to dip my hand in the flour and I don't know, that was probably a fourth more cup of flour. Now you want to divide this. It doesn't have to be exactly in half. In fact, you probably would want that bottom crust to be just a little larger. All right, we're going to set the, this portion of it aside, and we're going to roll this out. And notice I didn't use any flour on the plastic sheets. So just going to mash that out. Into sort of a round disc shape. Alright, so I'm going to uh, wash my hands and get the other plastic over and start rolling this out. We'll be right back. Okay, I have completed rolling out my uh, bottom crust. So I'm going to now take the top layer of plastic off. I'm going to set that aside because I'll be using that again for my top crust. set that to one side and reuse that plastic for my bottom crust. Okay, so I have no flour or anything on here. I'm going to pick this up in the plastic, flip it right over into my pie shell, I mean my pie pan, excuse me. start smoothing that out, starting at the center. And then you're ready to take off your plastic. Now I'm going to try to reuse this plastic also. So I'm going to just gently pull that off. Alright, so I'm going to set this aside now. And we're ready to roll out our top crust. You know, it's a little hard to work with the plastic when you're doing the double crust, but it's possible. You can do it. All right, so we're going to lay this back out and get it as straight as we can get it. And so now we're ready to roll out our top crust. And the same procedure, just mash it down into as much of a round shape as you can get it. this one and just start rolling it out starting at the center and just turn your rolling pin all around that way you can keep it in a somewhat round shape a glass Pyrex pan for fruit pies. Alright, I think that's large enough to cover that. In fact, I'm sure it is. Alright, now we're going to set this aside while we get the apple pie filling ready. So 
So again, I'm just going to pick this up and move it over to the side. All right, now this is about nine apples. Now they were varying sizes, but I want to make sure that my pie is tall. And I've had these soaking in water that I'd added just a, a not even a teaspoon of salt in so they wouldn't turn brown. So I'm going to drain this and we'll be right back and I'll show you how to make the filling. Okay, I have drained the apples. Now, I had them uh, soaking in the water with a little bit of salt in it and uh, that was to prevent them from turning dark while I was making the pie crust. Alright, so to these apples I'm going to add one cup of sugar one third of a cup of just all-purpose flour one teaspoon of cinnamon and one half teaspoon of ground nutmeg now that's all the spices I put in my apple pie I, I really like to be able to taste the apple more than the spices themselves. So, so now I'm going to mix up the sugar and flour mixture with the spices and that's just it's just a lot easier to mix it up before you dump it into the apples. Now if you didn't soak your apples at this point you would need to just sprinkle a little salt on them, just a little bit, not much. All right, this is pretty well mixed up now. I'm going to go ahead and dump this right on top of these apples. Now I like for my apple pies to be really tall, and uh, but sometimes I overdo it and make too many apples, but we're going to see how many we can get in that pie crust. So now you're just going to mix this up, kind of coat those apples. That's probably good enough right there. All right, so we're going to bring our uh, bottom crust back in. And we're ready to put our apples in there now. And we'll see how many of these I can get in this crust. Now what's left over on the apples, I'll just add a little water to it and go ahead and just cook them in a pot. And it'll just be cooked apples. And then I'm going to pile these up pretty high. And I would say that you would uh, need about eight apples to make an apple pie. You know, medium sized apples. this will make your house smell wonderful once it starts cooking. Now you'll need to bake this at 425 degrees probably for an hour till your crust gets good and brown on top. Okay, now we're ready to add our top crust. Now I had this many little apples left over. So I'll just put those in a pot and cook them on the stove and you know we can have those at a meal also. Alright, so we're now ready for that top crust and this is a little tricky because I'm going to place some air vent holes in it and if you can do that before you put that top crust on it would be better but I don't really do it that Here's that top crust. Just going to put it right over there. Get it positioned while the plastic is still on it now. Get it really positioned and that way I can mash those apples down just a little bit. Alright, let's 
take that off now. Scary, isn't it? <laughs> I always get scared at this point. Ooh, whatever comes over in my oven. Oh, and I've had that happen before. All right, now we need to join the top crust to the bottom crust. So what I did, I really don't, uh, I probably should have uh, cut some of this off just a little bit around the edge. Because my favorite part of the pie is that really thick crust at the edge. I love that. Just to make it even. Okay. Now I'm going to take the two crust and just mash them up sort of together. Because I don't want any of that filling bubbling out. Alright, now once they're, they're really mashed together, then I'm going to turn that down and just mash it down in there. You're just really kind of rolling it down in there because you do not want it to bubble out on the edge here, especially since we put so many apples in it. Sorry, I didn't need to hit the camera. All right, now to make it a little more attractive, and just pinch the edges like that. I'm just taking it in between my fingers and just pinching it just to make a little design. Here's the final step on this, or next to the final step. You're going to need to make some steam vents. What I do is just put my knife in, just go back and forth and make a little square vent. I usually just do five of them, like that. All right, now, now we're at the final step. Because this is going to cook for an hour, 425 degrees. You're going to need to shield this little outside edge here and that's so it won't get so brown. So you'll cook it for about 45 minutes at 425 degrees and then for the last 15 minutes you want to take your little aluminum foil off the pie. And it'll just take probably three little strips. will probably be enough. And those strips are maybe three inches wide. And I just kind of hook them together as best I can. Yeah. And then you can get those little things that go around the pies to keep them from burning fruit pies on the edge. I just never have ordered any of those. All right, this works pretty good for me. All right, we're ready to put it in the oven, and that would be at uh, 425 degrees for 45 minutes, and take your um, aluminum foil off the edge, and then another 15 minutes. Now, if you want to brush the top with milk or whatever, you can do that too. Now. I did not put any butter in this because we are going to be having this with ice cream. And uh, But if you wanted to put butter in, you'd need it, I'll, and I'll include that in the recipe, cut up about four tablespoons and just dot it on the inside there. It's really not necessary though. All right, so we'll be back when this is done. Okay, this apple pie is all done and ready. Now, it did go over in the oven a little bit but see all can y'all see this I don't know if you can see that where it ran 
out just a, just a little bit. That's my favorite part right there. Now, what did I do with the extra apple filling that was left over? Here it is, all cooked up. And I added to that about a teaspoon of vanilla, two tablespoons of brown sugar. And then I cooked that. And now I'm going to put that in my blender. And we're going to put this over the pie on top of the ice cream. All right. It is really hot, but we're going to grind this up now. Here's my vanilla apple sauce. That's going to go right on top of the ice cream once this pie is cooled, a little bit anyway. All right. Here it is. And that's going to go right over top of the ice cream. We'll have a piece of pie, then the scoop of ice cream, and then this right down the top of it. Now I added to the little apple mixture that was left over a couple of tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of brown sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla. Then I just grind it up or blend it up in the blender. All right, this pie gets cool enough to cut. We'll be back and show you what it looks like. Okay, we are ready to have some of this pie. It's slightly cooled. And we didn't let it cool the whole way because we were too anxious to have some of this. The vanilla ice cream. Put a scoop on mine. All right, and now the big finale is the sauce. Now I'm going to leave the uh, recipe for the sauce in the description right down below. All right, and it's still warm. Put that over your ice cream. Use the jiggling, but we're going to go up closer. Look at that. Oh, I cannot wait. Come back a little bit. There it is. There's all that delicious sauce. And I'll have to tell you, the sauce is what makes this so delicious. All right, we are ready to eat this. And we'll be back and see you next time.